Welcome to Akron and Colmec videos. Today we're going to be performing clinical examination focused on hand nerve examination, which includes the ulnar, radial, and nasal nerves. The radial nerve innervates the lateral aspect of the dorsum of the hand and the dorsal surface of the lateral three and a half digits. The median nerve innervates the skin of the palmar side of the thumb, index finger, middle finger, and lateral half of the ring finger, including the nail beds. The ulnar nerve is responsible for the sensation of the fifth finger and the medial half of the ring finger. For the median nerve examination, we have three tests. Tenant's test, Fallon's test, and Durkin's test. For Tenant's test, it's actually by applying pressure over the median nerve, and a positive sign would be paresthesia along the distribution of the median nerve. For Fallon's test, you're going to ask the patient to extend the wrist at 90 degrees, and pain would be as a positive sign. For Durkin's test is actually by applying pressure over the carpal tunnel area and pain would be as a positive sign. Tenet's test is a way to detect median nerve damage. It's performed by lightly tapping over the distribution of the median nerve. A positive test would be elected by a sensation of tingling or paresthesia along the distribution. Durkin's test is where the examiner presses the thumb over the carpal tunnel and holds for 30 seconds. A positive result would be an onset of pain or paresthesia in the median nerve distribution. In Fallon's test, the patient is asked to hold their wrist in complete and forced flexion, pushing the dorsal surfaces of both hands together for 30 to 60 seconds. Symptoms such as burning or tingling sensation over the thumb, index, middle, and ring fingers is a positive test result and suggests carpal tunnel syndrome. For the ulnar nerve, you're going to be testing for two signs the Froman sign and the Wurtenberg sign. For the Froman sign, you're going to ask the patient to hold a paper with their index finger and their thumb, and then you're going to try to put away the paper, and a positive sign would be demonstrated by being able to apply the paper, to put the paper away. For the Wurtenberg sign, you're going to ask the patient to actually lay hands on flat on bed, and you're going to try to do passive abduction, and then persistent abduction would be considered as a positive sign. For the Froman test, to perform this test, the patient is asked to hold an object, such as a piece of paper, between the thumb and index finger. The examiner then attempts to pull the object out of the patient's hand. With ulnar nerve palsy, the patient will experience difficulty maintaining and hold the object. For Wartenberg test, ask the patient to lie both their hands flat on bed. Then the examiner is going to passively attempt to abduct the patient's fingers. Then ask the patient to abduct their fingers. A positive sign would be with persistent abduction of the last finger. Finkelstein's test is used to diagnose dequivariant tenosynovitis. You ask the patient to make a closed fist with their thumb inside. Then ask them to tilt their wrist down or ulnar deviation. A positive sign would be with sharp pain along the radial nerve distribution. ICUFS test is used to diagnose dequivariant tenosynovitis. The patient is going to place their arm at the edge of the bed. The examiner is going to stabilize the patient's arm with one hand. The patient is then going to make a closed fist with their thumb inside. The examiner is going to attempt to do ulnar deviation of the wrist. Positive sign would be with pain and numbness along the distribution of the nerve. For the radial nerve examination, you're going to be asking the patient to make a fist position and you're going to try to apply resistance against flexion. A positive sign will be demonstrated as a wrist drop.